Dorothy in the first Presbyterian Church's mission statement that's been in the world together. We are the first community of caring people, bound together in man to worship and glorify God, to spiritually nurture and support one another, and to serve the Christ to serve us. is so 
Psalm 66, we're going to do verses 8 through 20. We will read it responsibly. It's found on page 528 and 529 of your Q Bible. I'll give you a minute to find it. Psalm 66, starting with verse 7. Bless our God, O people, let the sound of his praise be heard. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us to the You laid the burdens on our backs. You let people rule over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come to your house and our hearts. I will pay you my vows. Those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will call to you in your offerings and the families with the smoke and the sacrifice of friends. I will make all your bulls and goats. Come and hear all who fear God. And I will tell what he has done for me. I am proud of my opinion, and he is the soul of my son. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But the true love has listened. He has given me to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer, or removed his steadfast love from me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Next, we will sing all verses of softly and tenderly. Uh, it's found on page 418 in our hymn.
The scripture lesson for today is taken from, again, the Gospel of John. This time, the 14th chapter, verses 15 through 21. Listen for God to speak to you from God's holy word. Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray for a moment. In the stillness of this time and place, O oh God, we earnestly desire our presence with you. We seek your spirit and ask that it may enter into us and open our ears and our minds to receive your word. For we ask it in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I have a little story I want to share with you. phone rang, and Jill picked it up to hear a feeble voice say, is this St. Paul's Presbyterian Church? And Jill thought, I really don't have time for this this morning, but the lady continued, I live alone and I'm confined to a wheelchair. My children live in another state and I just get so lonely I can't stand it. I'm not able to get to church. Could you just talk to me for a few minutes? Jill felt embarrassed because she had planned to meet a friend for lunch. But returning to the conversation, Jill said, Look, I'm glad you got the wrong number. I would very much like to get to know you. Please give me your name and address, and I will be there within the hour with lunch. And we can get to know each other. Last week, I talked about loving and loving relationships. And this week, I want to start off where I left off kind of last week with the first verse, verse 15 of this passage, where it starts off saying, If you love me. Now, do you remember last week I said I was really good about saying if you love me and getting what I wanted? If I didn't get it out of my parents, I'd get it out of my two aunts. And maybe you've used that expression. If you love me, you will. And today, to me, it seems like that word love has just become a word. It's a word that's often spoken, but rarely 
demonstrate it. Our society in large has become careless and it's also become careless with the way we use that word love. You know, I could say I love German chocolate cake. Well, I don't really love it, but I like to eat it. We use that word love so flippantly. I want you to think for a moment this morning about who you love. Who do you love? Why do you love them? Do you love Christ? And if you do, why do you love him? How do you love him? What evidence is there to prove that you love Jesus. I once heard it said that if you were brought before a court being accused of loving Jesus, would there be enough evidence to convict you? Loving Christ involves more than just Sunday Christianity. It's more than singing in the choir, more than serving on a committee, more than being an elder. Loving Jesus means that His will, not mine, must be done. And if you know that's true, we can know it's true by looking at the rest of that verse. <clears throat> Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. How do you even begin to do that? I think every parent has heard that expression, if you love me. And maybe you're even guilty of using it with your parents long ago. If you love me, if you really love me, you will. And every time I hear that, if you love me, you will, I think of my fair lady. There is a song in My Fair Lady that Liza Doolittle sings. And in the song she says, don't speak of time last, don't speak of love lasting through time. If you're in love, show it. And that's basically what Jesus is saying here. If you're in love, Show me. Christ Jesus, by his obedience to God, showed the love of God. Jesus knew that he was called to give obedient love. Love that would be difficult for all of humanity and therefore he made us a promise in verse 16. Because he knew how hard it would be for us to love and keep those commandments. So in verse 16 he says, I will ask my father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. So, what is a counselor? <clears throat> the Greek word is parakletos. And it has several meanings in English. <coughs> it can mean 
to be an intercessor. It can also be used as the word counselor. It can also be translated advocate, comforter, attorney, in addition to being someone who will listen and counsel. So what does this mean for us? That Jesus is going to leave us a parakletos. Well, it means that Jesus has already asked God to leave the Holy Spirit here on earth to be the substitute for Christ. Christ ascended into heaven and is no longer here, but his advocate, his counselor, the Holy Spirit, is here. The Holy Spirit is the one, therefore, who comes forth on behalf of Christ Jesus to help us in our living out of his command. But sometimes, we're like to impatient, busy, not willing to take the time to love. And you know, showing love sometimes is really inconvenient. It's really hard. <laughs> Especially if we have to love somebody with the love of Christ, because the Bible here does not say you have to like everybody and follow my commandments. You have to love them. There's a big difference between liking Jesus and really loving him. And we don't have to like everybody. But we do have to love them. And we love them by showing them the way Jesus would act. By doing what Jesus would do for them. And doing it willingly without a grudge or without a scowl on our face. But to love others with a smile and with loving words. You see, the problem with loving, this is something I have discovered after two marriages. Loving costs us something. Loving costs us patience. It costs us time. And it even sometimes may involve sharing a part of ourselves, our own history, our own life. And therefore, love is really, really difficult, especially for some people. It's difficult for them to love and to give it away in a genuine way. Loving obedience to the teachings of Jesus and doing as he would do can be really difficult. I have had people in my life that I thought, oh, I know I don't like that person that I'm, I'm commanded to love them. To do that whether I want to or not. Love is difficult. It's unpredictable. And sometimes, yes, it's inconvenient. So what we must remember about this love that Jesus talks about is in verses 20 and 21. 
In those two verses, he says, on that day, you will realize that I am in the Father and you are in me. And I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Now in those two verses, there are two little, often overlooked words that have a little bit different meaning in Greek than they do in English. The first one is the verse, is the word in. What does it mean? It's pronounced the same way in Greek as it is in English. It's in. In. And here the word in establishes a relationship. And the word I like to use in place of in, which is a legitimate translation, is among. I think that's especially important here. I am among you. And then when you combine that with the word human, that's a word that every southerner knows. Every good person who lives below the Mason-Dixon line knows what that word means. Because that word is a plural you. Now, in French, there are two U's. There's the word tu, T-U, and that means somebody close to you, a single person. But the other U is the word vu, the O-U-S. And that's really simple. When you're reading a French line, you know if they use tu, they mean one person, and that's you. But if you, they use vu, you know it's a group of people. Well, we don't have that in English except in the South. In the South, we have a plural you. And what is it? Y'all. Y'all. <laughs> That's what Jesus is talking about here. I'm among you all. I'm among y'all. I'm not just in one person. I'm in a group of people. Those two words assure us that the reason we can love is because the love of Christ Jesus is among y'all. So how is that translated in your Well, we can always say, you know, I love y'all. And we can use that word just as lightly as we use the word love. So you can include everybody in that word. You. Y'all. Christ Jesus is among all of us. So we can be relying on his support and love in each other. This morning I was going to sing a song at the end of my sermon like I did last week. And I practiced it at home and it sounded like I was yodeling. Because my voice just would not come with me. It's a song that is sung by Sandy Patty. And it's one of my favorite songs. It's entitled, Love 
in any language. And at the beginning of the psalm, it uses the word, I love, in all different native tongues. It starts off with, je t'aime, I love you. Not, je vous aime. If you use vous in there, it means a whole group of people. But je t'aime means I love one person. I love you individually. And she goes on and uses all these different translations of the word love. And she says that love is in every language. And then she says true love is from the heart. Love in any language comes from the heart. It comes from within. And though people try to destroy that concept of love, the love of Christ Jesus, it still exists to death. And we, as followers of Christ Jesus, are to bring that love all the world. So that, and she ends with saying, so all the world will see love in any language fluently spoken here. We are encouraged to love all. And I'd like to say that love isn't love unless you give it away. Love isn't something you say. It's something you do. So how do we love in keeping the commandments of Christ Jesus? We smile. <clears throat> We are positive, and we treat every person as though they matter, as though they are important to us, because that's what Jesus would do. Jesus loves every one of us with all our warts and wrinkles and fat and gray hair, and white hair, and blonde hair, he loves it all. And commands us to show that same love to everyone, equally. Love in any language, fluently spoken here.
pray for all who are oppressed. We pray for all whose voices are not heard or believed. Bless us with the desire for justice and give us the strength as we work forward for your coming again into our world. We pray for all who are hungry, lost, or away. We seek your presence and guidance for all who worry each day about how they will care for their families. Bless us, O oh God, as we love and care for each other as we find our sustenance in you. We pray for all who suffer the violence and scars of war. We ask for comfort and direction for all soldiers and their families. We ask protection and guidance for all who live and serve in war-torn places such as Cameroon or the Sudan or Nigeria or Israel and France. Give these people courage in the face of fear in times of trouble. Bless us with your vision of peace as you have made us one family by giving life and breath to all. We ask your presence for all who are caught in the grip of disease and illness of body, mind, or spirit. May your strong presence through the power of the Holy Spirit be with those who have lost loved ones that they also may know your peace through the gift of love expressed by those who love with the love of Christ. May we know you, know your love, as we enjoy knowledge of eternal life that will be shared with you. And now with the confidence of the children of God, we dare to come before you with the power of our Savior saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of forever. Amen. <coughs> Let us join in the affirmation of faith. Thank you. 
subject to their preference. Let us say what we believe. I believe in God the Father. Amen. Oh.